I wondered, how many here feel that they have a good memory? Are there any here? Or we're being modest. Are there any here who can remember anything, anything at all besides the rain? <laughs> From our Perth District Convention that we've just had. Any highlights that we can think of? I thought we were going to have highlights this evening from the, from the convention. Anything that we can think of, let's have a think. Your turn to answer. You have to prompt me. Hamilton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. In the, it was the uh, talk about the attitude of gratitude after the drama um, and um, how we've not to view spiritual things in the way ah. that the Israelites viewed the contemptible bread. What did you think about that drama? Wasn't that talk afterwards? Didn't that really hammer home what we're talking about? Because sometimes we get confused. We think, all oh, the drama, everyone's dressed up. Brothers with beards. You don't see them on the platform often, do you? But it wasn't. What a powerful lesson that drama taught us. <sighs> but the plat. The Bible drama. Yeah, it was excellent. Yeah, pity it rained. I pity we didn't see the old Lansing at the end. Would you like to have seen the Lansing? Yeah, we always like a good Lansing in our meetings. Our brother right at the back there, he should he put his hand down. Oh, let's give him the microphone and see what he's got. The baptism talk. Did you like the baptism talk? Yeah, did you like that bit about singing in, in a bank? Remember that? Yeah? yeah? It was a lovely talk, very good. Yeah? Anything else that we remember? Brother Cassidy? I like the symposium on um, Zephaniah, Ooh. the verse by verse um, going through thing. Yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> Don't worry about embarrassing yourself, we're already laughing, just keep going. <laughs> um, it's just kind of, sort of hammered home really where we are in the stream of time and, yeah. and really the importance of uh, you know, basically uh, um, our, our staying f um, holding fast to Jehovah. Yeah. If we missed some of that talk, we get it again on Sunday. We get some of the same talk on Sunday. The society are really going to leave this system with a clean conscience because they're banging home a very simple message. Who else had their hand up then? Oh, Brother McLean. We had a very good talk based on the watchtower. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a man who's going to go far, isn't there? <laughs> Brother Gold. I like the uh, item on rumour and gossip and uh, uh -huh. some of the pointers about uh, knowing where the rumour comes from and whether it was plausible and things of that kind. Yes. Has the person... Would the person really be in a position to know about these... I tell you what, I've heard rumours concerning all sorts of things. And if half of them were true, well, I don't know what we do. Absolute nonsense. Don't even bother listening to it. Waste of mental energy. Don't listen to rumours and gossip. Let's have one more. Who else is going to... Oh, Sister Richie. I thought the whole weekend there were some lovely scriptures brought out, some that I didn't know. One was Luke 10.20, and I think it was Sue Hunter, and she said it was what gave us joy in field service. It wasn't results, it was doing Jehovah's will. Ah. Mm. It'd be good to put little things like that. I said, could, could we go on all evening? Oh, well, all right then. We'll have our sister there. Oh, we're dancing around now. It was a very good talk. Why be attentive to God's wonderful works? And I was talking about gravity and all the other wonderful works of God. When he asked Job, Job, where did you happen to be when I found it there? Ah, the public talk. But you were cheating. You had your notes. <laughs> Do you know what we've been doing over the last few minutes? We've been exercising something. What is it? What have we been exercising our sister here? Please. Memory. Wouldn't you agree that the human memory is one of the most outstanding gifts that Jehovah God has ever given humans? It's a fact. Do you know that scientists point out that our memory is completely different to that of animals? Completely different. We actually have two memories. We have an instant recall. I can look over here, but I know Sister Goff is wearing a blue and white dress. And we have a long-term recall. It's that long-term recall that helps us to draw on things that we've learned from the past so that we don't continually have to go over the same things. Just, just think of how difficult life would be without that memory. 
Every time you got into a car to drive it, brothers, you think, now what's this stick for? What's, mind you, some of our brothers, I think, might. <laughs> and our sisters, well, think how difficult life would be for our sisters. All the necessary things they remember. How many minutes you turn the microwave on for? How you use that little tin opener? All those big things. So we need our memories. But you know, you'd never believe what some people can forget. Let's open our Bibles and shock ourselves. We won't believe it. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 8. With this stunning tool of memory, look at what Moses warned the Israelites not to forget here. Deuteronomy chapter 8, and we just look at verses 11 through 14. So just think about this. Moses said, Watch out for yourself that you may not forget Jehovah your God so as not to keep his commandments and his judicial decisions and his statutes that I am commanding you today for fear that you may eat and indeed satisfy yourself and you may build good houses and indeed dwell in them and your herd and your flock may increase and silver and gold may increase for you and all that is yours may increase and your heart may indeed be lifted up and you may indeed forget Jehovah your God. Just think about that. He was saying, don't forget Jehovah. I wonder what he meant. How could people forget Jehovah? I mean, we've got this memory, we've just been recalling things. You know, the more you think, the more you can draw out of your memory. If we really pushed ourselves, we could remember things from conventions from years, decades ago. So the memory's got this ability to remember. So what did he mean? Don't forget Jehovah. It couldn't have meant that the fact that Jehovah would no longer be there in their memories, that they'd see, see the temple, or, well, not for those, but they would see a temple later on, and they think, oh, who, who's the God behind this temple? Completely forget Jehovah. That wasn't what he was saying, was it? So what was he saying? You know, this evening, if we find out what he meant by that and apply it personally, we will counter the biggest problem facing brothers and sisters in countries like this now. The one that's causing many to just drift away. Now we're not talking about immorality, let's put that to one side because that's mentioned the convention. That's the reason that most are being disfellowshipped or disassociating themselves. That's becoming quite popular. And it's not that. This is something that is causing ones to just drift off. What does the word forget mean? Do we remember? The Bible contains a whole section explaining what the word forget means. Do we remember where it is? For the McManus, you an elder. You, do you remember, surely? No? Would you like a hint? No? Oh, well, we'll look for somebody else then. Oh, it's in Philippians chapter 3. Have we forgotten this? What does the word forget literally mean? Let's take a look. This is important. Philippians chapter 3. Now, just to make sure that we're all in the same wavelength, Notice what he says firstly in verse 13. Just so that we know he's actually speaking about this word forget, memory. He said, brothers, Paul speaking obviously, brothers, I do not yet consider myself as having laid hold on it, but there is one thing about it. Forgetting the things behind and stretching forward to the things ahead. So let's just stop. Did you see he used the word forget? Forgetting. He said, I'm forgetting the things behind. And what things was he speaking about? Well, he couldn't have meant he was completely forgetting. He'd forgotten certain things existed. And we know that because if you take a look across the page from verses 4 through 6, he actually lists down all the things he said he was forgetting. Take a look at them. He said in verse 4, 
though I, if anyone, do have grounds for confidence in the flesh. And what were those grounds? Well, he continues, if any other man thinks he has grounds for confidence in the flesh, I the more so. Circumcised the eighth day, out of the family stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born from Hebrews, as respects law, a Pharisee, as respects zeal, persecuting the congregation, as respects righteousness that is by means of law, one who proved himself blameless. So they're the things that Paul said he was forgetting. Hmm, but what were they? Be honest. If you were standing next to Saul, and you knew his background as you just described it there, and you were standing next to him in the first century, would you say that man's got a good career in front of him? Would you say that? Would you think, my word, he's got everything going for him? And it wasn't just those things either. We also know he was taught at the feet of Gamaliel, which meant basically he was being trained to get the number one legal position amongst the Jews. He came from a well-known, prominent family, there's no doubt about that. We also know he's multilingual. He spoke at least fluently two languages. So you're standing next to him, you think, oh, he's got a lot going for him. What a career he's got in front of him. He's acceptable to the Jews. They're going to train him to be their number one. And you know, there's even more. Because for some reason, probably because of something his father did, this man Saul was also acceptable to the world power at that time, Rome. He could claim Roman citizenship. My word, if you looked at that man, you were going to say, well, he's got a whole career in front of him. I envy him. Look at all the career advantages he's got. And he just said, I'm forgetting those things. Why? Read on. He's found something better. From verse 7, he said, Yet what things were gains to me, all these career advantages, these, these I have considered loss on account of the Christ. Why, for that matter, I do indeed also consider all things to be loss on account of the excelling value of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. On account of him, I have taken the loss of all things and I consider them as a lot of refuse that I may gain Christ. All those career advantages and what was he saying? He said, I'll forget those because I found Jesus Christ. It all clicks into place. I know where I'm going. I'm going that way. I'm going to forget the things behind. What did the word literally mean, forget? The exegetical dictionary of the New Testament points out the word forget means to be unconcerned about and to neglect. That's what he meant when he said, I'm forgetting those things. Now, how can we apply that here amongst ourselves? Well, there may well be some who were just like Paul. And they had great career advantages in front of them. And they gave them up. They forgot them, neglected them, because they wanted to be a pioneer or something like that. Do you know any like that? I do. I know some. Gave all those things up. Unconcerned about it. Just going that way. They found something better. If that's you, well done. Well done. Maybe there are some who have given up an inheritance to be a servant of Jehovah. Do you know any like that? Here's something. Recently, we were talking to a sister who was brought up in an extremely wealthy household. It was dream stuff. She had servants to look after. One of her servants was just assigned to comb her hair. As a sister, she had all that. Her family were very wealthy diamond merchants. Well, a family, a family still are wealthy diamond merchants. But once you got the truth, they said, here's your choice. You have all these things, and it really was. Whatever she wanted, she could have had like that instantly. Or you can turn your back on us, and you can have this silly religion. She made the wise choice. If that's you, keep going. Because although sometimes we think I've given a lot up, it's nothing. 
compared to what's coming. Neglect it. Be unconcerned about it. Mm, forget it. Now we can apply Paul's words like that, but also in other ways. Would we agree that being human beings, sinners, there's all sorts of things in the past that we'd like to forget. Our problem is sometimes we, we remember the things we should forget and we forget the things we should remember. Are there any things in your memory that you'd like to forget? Things in the past? Ah, oh, there must be. If we haven't got anything, well, we're unique. Unique. How can we neglect these things? They niggle us, they irritate us, they won't go away. How can we forget them? Well, one thing that can assist us is keeping in mind, keep in mind, what the Universal Sovereign Jehovah does with our past mistakes in His memory. You know, when you think about it, He is perfect. Omniscient knows all things. So sometimes we think, oh, all my sins, every single one of them, in detail, are all recorded perfectly in Jehovah's memory. And whenever I speak to him in prayer, it flashes back to him. No wonder he doesn't listen to me. That, we can reason that way. Notice what Jehovah God does with our sins in his memory. It's in Isaiah 43. And here, Jehovah God speaks for himself. Isaiah 43. And look at verse 25. He said, I, I am the one that is wiping out your transgressions for my own sake. And look at this. Look at this. He says, and your sins I shall not remember. That's quite an eye-opener, isn't it? He can, but he says there, I shall not do it. Do you trust Jehovah? What's he telling us there? Keep this in mind. We can learn lessons from our past mistakes. Good to do so, so we don't keep making the same ones. But do not constantly berate ourselves over things back there. Jehovah wants us to forget them, be unconcerned about them, neglect them, because we can't go back in history and do anything about it. He says that way 100%. Don't allow anything to drag you back. Charge forwards. I won't remember them. Isn't that a lovely thought? Perfect memory. And he shall not, I will not do it. That's what he says. So, we now know what the word forget means in the Bible. And we also know that Jehovah God wants us to forget certain things. Because nothing back there is anything compared with that up there. Keep it in mind. However, we started off our conversation, ooh, 18 minutes ago, by reading a scripture in Deuteronomy 8, 11 through 14. Now, it was only 18 minutes ago. Let's test our memories. Why was it? that Moses warned the Israelites not to forget Jehovah. What was the danger? Eighteen minutes. You can hear the cogs grating. Someone's put sand in the machine. Sister Duncan. Oh, she better get this right now. Was it because they were keeping remembering the things that they left in Egypt? Well, that would have come into the mind. That would have come into the mind. Brother Richie. I'm starting to build houses and feel comfortable with themselves. And what about their gold and silver? What was going to happen? Was it going to go downhill or uphill? Were they going to get more or less? They're going to get more. Hey, that's what he was saying. He was saying, when you get lots of material things, don't forget Jehovah. He was. Yeah. But does that mean Jehovah God wants us to be poor? Absolutely not. It's interesting, in the Insight Book, Volume 2, 805, under Riches, it says, it's in harmony with Jehovah's purpose that we be rich. He actually told the Israelites he wanted them to enjoy prosperity from their hard work, but... And here is the big but, and we'd like, if you're making notes, put this in capital letters and underline it. But, he saw to it 
that they were warned concerning the danger of forgetting him as the source of their wealth and beginning to trust in their riches. I wonder what they trusted them for. Refreshment? Security? It was, but it would have been all those sort of things. Do you know, we started off by saying here is the big thing that's causing ones to drift in countries like ours. Do you know what it is? Satan makes available to us material things that are just so outlandish that they suck your time up and you've got none left for Jehovah. I couldn't help but smile. This evening we had that little phrase used, timeshare, didn't we? Well, that's what, exactly what Satan wants. He wants, us to, he wants a share of our time. I know you've dedicated it to Jehovah, but give me a share. Oh, I'll pay you back with a lovely oh, whatever. We've got to be careful. We don't forget Jehovah because of material things. Now, we are not saying that material things are wrong. Most definitely not. But if our mind is so full of material things that Jehovah's put into a little box and he's put into the back of the memory so that we only get him out a few times a week when we come along to a meeting or something like that. Do you think we've forgotten him? Remember what the word forget means? Be unconcerned or neglect. Sobering, isn't it? What sort of things is Satan trying to get us to do so that we forget Jehovah? How about some of these? Computers. Do you like computers? I love them. Do you know anybody who always speaks about computers? Because that's how you tell what people are thinking about, what they're speaking, and what they're always doing. Do you like computers? Yeah. Are you one of these people who's always going on about, I've got to read these, 128 megabytes of RAM. Are you a 128 megabyte RAM man? How about a CD writer or DVD drive or 50 gigabyte hard drive? 600 megahertz chip. Does anybody know what those things mean? No one's going to own that, but they, yes. <laughs> but you see what we're saying? There's nothing wrong in computers, but don't forget Jehovah. Don't neglect him. Don't be unconcerned because some spend so much time on the computer, they forget all about their personal study. It's true. And, we, and we've got this thing about, oh, I use a CD-ROM. <laughs> what for? Do we prepare for the meetings? You see, we've got the CD-ROM, but all those other CDs, how much, where do they get? How many hours do you think we spend on the other things compared with the CD-ROM? Ah, where's Jehovah gone? Are we neglecting him? Are we unconcerned? Are we forgetting Jehovah? Sobering stuff, isn't it? How about another one? And this is the big one the society are emphasizing. And remember, we're not saying there's anything wrong in these things. Vacations. Vacations. Now, we're not saying there's anything wrong with vacation. I'd love one. If anybody's thinking of... Well, anyway. In fact, I always say at this point, cruises. And my dream is to one day go on a cruise. I think I'll have to build a boat first. Vacations. Would you agree that now Satan's putting pressure on us so that we feel that we've got to get more refreshment by going on more vacations. It's true, isn't it? He's got this, he's got this manipulated. Years ago, I can remember in the late 60s, if a brother went abroad for one week to Spain on an aeroplane, when he came back, we basically prostrated ourselves in the Kingdom Hall to him. <laughs> he was nearer to God than the rest of us. He had a real tan. Not one of those ones you get in Britain. You know the ones where you, you're afraid to go in the shower until the end of November just in case it goes down the drain. A real glow in the dark. Glow in the dark tan. But now, ones are seeking out refreshment by extensive holidays abroad. Well, there's nothing wrong in vacations, but you know it doesn't matter if we had 12 months of vacation every year. You know, you can only find refreshment in that. Do we believe that? Does our lifestyle demonstrate it, though? Thought-provoking things. Do you know, if we come along after our last vacation and we immediately go down to the travel agents and we're looking in the brochures and we're speaking about, well, we had a lovely time in Barbados, but we're going to go further away next time. Can you go further away than Barbados? 
We'd go over here, there and everywhere. We've got the brochures. You could have to do a little bit of overtime to get the money, but oh dear me, you need a break, don't you? Well, we need a break because we're working all the overtime. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's a nasty little cycle. And who's there pulling the strings saying, I'll get them to forget Jehovah. I'll offer them all these things. They'll soon neglect him. They'll be unconcerned about him. Beware of Satan's manipulation. He really is so crafty. So how can we show that we have not forgotten Jehovah? We have to remember to do certain things. Do we read that book every day? Did you notice at the convention they said read the Bible every day? They didn't say spend three or four hours every day reading the Bible. That's unrealistic. In fact, some of the comments were very short periods of time that would be... But it was regular every day. They were putting it in. They hadn't forgotten Jehovah. Could we keep that in mind? It really is important. How about regular meeting attendance? We always get a marvellous figure here at the circuit visit. It's so encouraging. Would we agree it's encouraging to come along and see a full kingdom all? We would like that every week. How does it come down to do it? It's us. Don't forget Jehovah. He says, come along to the meetings. You'll benefit, but also you being here will help others. And I want to help everyone. That's what Jehovah's saying. Don't forget him. Don't be unconcerned. How about deep study? What are we going to do with this Daniel book? It looks as if we're going to get more as well, because we've got the Isaiah book afterwards. Oh, what is society doing to us? Does it hurt? Does deep study hurt? You know, some brothers, they say, I'm not inclined towards study. Well, actually, did you notice that at the convention also? Very few of us are. But the one sister who said she was studious said she didn't meditate upon it, so she got nothing out of it anyway. Let's not fool ourselves with the Daniel book. You know, we can come along unprepared. And I'm not having a go now, because we all get into this sometimes, don't we? We come along unprepared. And you know, you've got the book, and you've got it right up close to your chest. You, you find that you just nod every now and then. That's, 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 that's good. You haven't got a clue what's going on. And you can just give a little answer. from Because the, anybody can give an answer. That book is so good. It explains such deep things in ways that we can absorb and understand. Anybody can read a little comment. Well, it's good to do that. What we should be doing is pre-studying that book. Don't forget it. And if we think... Well, my mind is not that way inclined. Do it anyway. Because Jehovah God can train us to be that way inclined. It's strange what we can do with our mind. Now, recently I went to see, well, actually it was some time ago now. About a year or so, I forget now. But I went to see a brother. And I said to him, how are you doing? Because he, he stopped going to the meetings. Never done any personal study, no deep study. And I said, what are you doing with your time? And he showed me this book. You would not have believed it. It was about that thick. And it was about that size. It was a huge book. Do you know what book it was? It was the workshop manual for the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> and you know, this brother had basically memorized the whole of this book. And I said, you better sit down there, Ian. I've got some information for you. It might make you feel a little unsteady on your feet. There is no Starship Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, and you could see him. He went all pale. And do you know what he did? And this is the truth. He looked me right in the eye and said, if the warp drive fails, this book tells you how to fix it. <laughs> he had gone through this book so much that he could quote page to refer to whatever. Absolute nonsense. But he couldn't find time to study the Daniel book. What had happened? Unconcerned, neglect, equals, forget. I heard that he'd stopped going to the meeting. I heard today, actually, we had some lovely news that he started going back. So glad, because I count that man as a friend. But I tell you what, if we don't remember to study this book, the Bible, and to prepare for the meetings and get along to the meetings. We're unconcerned with Jehovah. We're neglecting him. 
we're forgetting him. Now, now is not the time to forget Jehovah.